The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets. The reason why it is crucial to look at what's being discussed online for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. All right, let's get started. So we're seeing UN diplomats in the handbook. Yeah. Connect the dots for us. <laughs> Something you don't see every day. I mean, in fact, how many Koreans wear hanbok? Not a lot. I mean, there there are people, of course, who who like special occasions like weddings. Occasion, right? But it's not common. Exactly. So this happened last Friday at local time. Uh, New York hosted this rather unique hanbok fashion show, uh, featuring none other than uh, UN. Ambassadors. (laughs) Ambassadors. <laughs> so the Korean mission to the United Nations held a National Day reception mm. at its building near the UN headquarters. Okay, so the National Day reception apparently is an annual event that brings together diplomats from other UN missions, high ranking officials to celebrate Korea's national holiday, Strength and Ties. Mm-hmm. And it is held around the time of Korea's National Foundation Day, October That's right. 3rd. That's right. So around 200 uh, guests. Guests attended this year's event, including ambassadors, deputy ambassadors, and senior officials. Um, Now, this year's event stood out uh, from the previous ones because uh, foreign diplomats and their family members took to the runway wearing... Hanbok. And it was the first time, in fact, that diplomats from other countries around the world participated in a Hanbok fashion show. Mm. Uh, many of them apparently spent hours uh, getting ready for the event. Sometimes we forget. Um, if you're trying on Hanbok pieces for the first time, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. <laughs> and the hair, we try to get that right yeah. too. <laughs> there are many, I guess, components that make up the Hanbok. Now, uh, as soon as the fashion show began, you know, guests were seen pulling out their phones to capture the moments. Uh, Vanessa Fraser, for example, who is the ambassador of Malta and a member of the UN Security Council, she sort of walked on the runway. Uh, you know, she was wearing the traditional Korean hairpin. And at first she looked a little bit shy. Mm. Uh, but then everyone was like cheering her on. And uh, she was photographed grinning <laughs> <laughs> under the applause. Now, the former foreign minister of the Czech Republic, Jacob Kulinek uh, showed off, uh, you know, his royal robe from the <laughs> Choson dynasty. Of course. He looks very playful there in that photo, doesn't he? So he sort of walked in the runway. He's carrying himself with uh, this regal d- demeanor. Befitting of a king. Yeah, and everyone started laughing. <laughs> Have to Not play the part. at him, but uh, they were him. thoroughly impressed. Now, another highlight of the evening was the Korean food that was served. Uh, you know, they were nothing fancy, just okay. like, you know, everyday food like rice, kimchi, pancakes, uh, tapte. They were a huge hit amongst the guests, actually. It's funny because you say simple, but if you've prepared any of these dishes yeah, before, you would know. Pretty time-consuming. <laughs> kimbap is one of the most time-consuming foods ever. Yes, kimbap and tteokbokki were served as well. <laughs> uh, one diplomat from uh, an Eastern European country was quoted by newspapers as saying, a lot of us, including myself, came here just for the Korean food today. <laughs> And he also talked about uh, some of his favorite Korean movies and dramas. Um, Now, this reception, not only was it, uh, you know, a fun fashion show, it was an opportunity for some diplomacy ahead of a really important UN Mm. election. So in his welcoming remarks, Hwang Jun-guk, South Korea's ambassador to the UN, said, even if you aren't familiar with the Korean language, um, I'm sure you know about Korean food and hanbok. I hope you enjoy the meal, especially those of you in charge of Thursday's election. Okay, so he was being cheeky, but definitely. uh, All right. 
tying the pieces together while Definitely everyone's there. Definitely a gentle nudge there. Yeah, nudge, yeah. nudge. So <laughs> besides ambassadors, there were working level diplomats from various missions who handle election duties mm. uh, that were also invited. Um, so Ambassador Huang's uh, rather subtle but not so subtle comment was a friendly reminder about the upcoming vote. All right. So the UNHRC, the Human Rights Council yeah. election is set for this Thursday. South Korea is making a final push for support to secure a seat. That's right. So the council members are elected by votes from the 193 UN member states, which each have one vote and gaining each country support is crucial. Mm. Now, in the last election for the 2022 uh, to 2025 term, South Korea aimed for re-election but did not succeed, which means the upcoming Thursday election is very important. All right. We'll see how it turns out. Yep. And I mean, the whole wine and dine experience, it is part of, you know, getting people on the same oh, page. Sure. But this is kind of extraordinary, yep. a humble fashion <laughs> <Yes>. show. <laughs> it's certainly eye-catching. Uh, we streamed some of the images. Hope you guys enjoyed it, too. All right. Let's move on to our second buzzword this morning. Clearly, there's a trend, right? I mean, yep. we've covered it before. Yes. But it's getting more elaborate each time we talk about it. A temple <laughs> retreat with, get this pasta on the menu yep. for singles in their 40s to spark something new uh, romantic connections yeah new relationships yep that's right so there was a temple stay event for singles in their 40s specifically those in their 40s called I'm off to the temple and it ended up bringing together four new couples ah. uh, during its first ever 40s focused okay. uh, session uh, the Choge order of Korean Buddhism Social Welfare Foundation said that around 140 men and 235 women mm. applied to join this uh, latest event, uh, which took place from October 5th to the 6th at the Hwagesa Temple in Seoul's Gangbukgu district. Now, after going through a selection process, 10 men <gasps> and 10 women were chosen, which means it was very competitive. Hundreds applied and only say, 10. It's like were, an interview. Yeah, a total of 20 were chosen. Right. Now, by the end of the event, four of them had found someone they had clicked with. Oh. So, you know, it was a fun, you know, time, two-day event. There were self-introductions. There there were games, shared meals, of course. There were walks around the temple grounds, mm. tea time, and even couple photo contests. <laughs> and the aim with, with all of this was to help these people naturally connect with one another. Now, I just kind of sort of imagine myself in this situation. Uh -huh. And there's something so quaint and peaceful about the temple. Yeah. It, it would sort of put me in a different mindset. Yes, set. I think so. Removing yourself from the hustle and bustle of your yeah. everyday life. Your probably in the city, getting away from your phones. Yeah. Uh, emails. Maybe it helps you center yourself and focus on things that are more important. Like the other person. Like the in other front person. Of, in front of you. How many times do I do that throughout the day? Not, Rarely. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so for dinner... Uh, the temple mm -hmm. served dishes like kimbab, roasted sweet potatoes, pumpkin fries, tteokbokki, and the menu, like you mentioned before, even included pasta, which is not your typical uh, temple meal, no. but it was definitely uh, a favorite among the participants. Now, even after the official events of the day wrapped up on the first night, many of them stayed up, apparently, talking mm -hmm. late into the night with people they were interested in. And, uh, you know, in terms of, like, profession, there was a good mix of professionals there. Mm -hmm. Some were business owners, there were teachers, public sector employees, finance workers, and many of them were in mid-level management roles. Because this time it was particularly garnered at those in their 40s, 40s. right? So they might be in different chapters of their careers. Yes. Now, usually the organizers share photos of the participants from the events, and it's usually for folks in their 30s. Yes. The last time we had this conversation, yeah. but this time they decided to keep everything private, private. for the 40s event. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciated that. Yes, uh, actually, some of the participants uh, yeah. said specifically without the cameras, it was a lot less stressful. And I completely understand where right. this is coming from. I, I mean, the idea of being more showy, sharing yeah. that it, it might be part of a different genre. I think I liked social media in my 20s. Oh, I loved social media in my yeah, 20s. Yeah, and then and I abruptly stopped towards yeah. my mid-20s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was quick. It was real fast. But yeah. I mean, to each their own. But I, I guess the 40s group right. might have appreciated something different. So there's another I'm 
time off to the temple event planned for November 2nd to the 3rd at this time Pegyangsa Temple mm-hmm. in Jeolla, Namdo Province. I mean, I've been there several times mm-hmm. to meet a certain world famous uh, monk slash chef. <laughs> There's a famous show on and it too. <laughs> yes, Tong Guan Sunim, right? Yeah. Uh, get this. She's actually going to cook <gasps> for the next event. Which uh, caters towards people in their 30s. Tong Guan Sunim is going to cook. I know I can't be there. But uh, this is this married. is really I think this this event <laughs> yeah. it's just growing and growing. They're really doing a great job, I think, in getting people's attention. Yeah. They're making it relevant. They're making yeah. it hip. They have. <laughs> I think the as fact hip that, as it gets. And the fact that we called it hip makes yeah. it not so... For an event that takes place in a temple, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that they found this momentum and people are interested yes. in it, I mean, taking it to the next level. And exactly. It sounds like it's doing what the, it was laid out to do, yeah. producing couples. That's right. In a nice, kind of natural yes. fashion. Yep. <laughs> All right, on to our final story today. Uh, catch a maker. That's how I know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haynes apologizes after ad featuring black families sparks anger online. What happened this time? I want to hear our our listeners take on this story. So Heinz has apologized after uh, they kind of like they created this new brand new advertisement campaign. Uh, It's displayed in the London subway station. Uh, And this ad, it's basically a humongous photo. It features a black family and a white family. And it sparked a lot of anger online. So the, the company recently launched this ad campaign for uh, family-sized pasta sauces. And uh, what happened was the advertisement shows a bride uh, who is a black woman. Okay. And she is seen enjoying a fork full of pasta with gusto, right? Okay. And there's even a stain on her white wedding dress. That's how... You know how much she's enjoying this a pasta sauce in the pasta. Yes, okay. and seated next to her is a white man who is presumably the groom, and the billboard appears to show the groom's white parents and an older black woman who is seemingly the bride's mother, but there is no father, father, father of the bride. There's yeah. no father of the bride, seemingly, ah. and uh, some social media users have criticized this advertisement for. F- it's for basically erasing black fathers okay. from the picture. This is a wedding, a very important day right. for many people. Right. Now, the author and a Guardian contributor, whose name is Nels Abbey, posted on X, for my brother, brothers with daughters, because believe it or not, black girls have dads too. Ah. And this post has since gone viral. Now, one ex-user responded to that post saying, quote, Total erasure of black fathers by such a mainstream brand is shocking. How did this get approved? Another person wrote, yes, it's beautiful, the interracial relationship, and they wanted to keep five people on the table, but the erasure of black dads is not fair. Okay, so how has Heinz, the company behind the controversial ad, responded? You know yeah. what? They have apologized. Okay. They, they said, we extend our deepest apologies and we'll continue to listen, learn, and improve to avoid this happening again in the future. But again, it makes you wonder, you know, to produce an ad, everything is intentional. There's an intention behind every move and every decision. So I I, I also cannot help but wonder, but, but why the decision to... Who approved it? Because there's many steps to dad. get there. And so how many steps did it take to remove the dad? Exactly. So, but here's another angle of the story. Um, Some people pointed out a phrase in the bottom right hand corner of the poster, which reads, based on a true story. Does that mean possibly not defending the case, Mm. but the father of the bride was actually absent because maybe he's not around? Yeah. That's what it seems uh, to, to be. insinuate. Okay. And one person actually wrote, wouldn't traditional wedding seating mean the bride's father sits next to the groom's mother, meaning the man on the left is the bride's father and it is the groom's father who is missing. Okay, so yeah. it's really left open for That's discussions. Right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, anyways, this is like, this is I, I saw this hmm. all over the news yesterday. Okay, listeners, how do you it. feel about it? We just streamed the ads. Uh, your thoughts on it? There are no mm. simple or right or wrong answers. We just want to continue the conversation. Yeah. If people feel uncomfortable, then we should talk about it. We should talk about yes. it. Thank you very much, Erica. <laughs> Pleasure as always. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.
If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.